Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have another uh, really beautiful problem for you guys today. Uh, this one was an IMO shortlist problem. So um, probably on the harder end of the problems that I um, show on my channel. Um, it's, it was from 2002 and it was problem number seven. And it's surprising how few initial conditions there are in the problem and yet it can turn out to be so tricky. Um, so if you wanna to try to solve it, uh, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm gonna go over it. So we have a triangle ABC with in circle omega. It's tangent to side BC at a point K. Uh, AD is an altitude and M is the midpoint of segment AD. Um, actually, I just realized um, I, I made F the altitude instead. So you'll just have to um, suppose it says AF instead of uh, AD right here. Um, and I made D the, the in center. Um, let N be the common point of the in circle and line KM. Um, so that's N. And we want to show that the in circle uh, and the circumcircle of BCN are tangent at point N. So a deceptively simple problem. Um, so how do we get started here? Um, well, first we want to see what does it mean for the in circle um, and the circumcircle um, of BCN to be tangent at the point N? How can we turn that into sort of a condition about angles or something like that? Um, so to kind of just get a feel for what it means, I'm going to draw the tangent line to point N. Um, so basically this, this tangent line at point N to the N circle, we want to show that that's also the tangent line to triangle uh, BNC. So what would that mean? So I'm going to draw on a few more points. Um, I'm going to let E be the intersection of uh, NB with the N circle and G be the intersection of NC with the N circle. Um, and it kind of looks like EG is parallel to BC and that happens to be um, what's equivalent to those two circles being tangent at point N. So if, if the um, if the circumcircle of B and C really were tangent um, to this line at point N, then that would mean that um, if we call this point right here P, any point on this line, then that would mean angle B and P would be equal to angle B, C, N. Um, and, and, but then also we know that the N circle is tangent at point N, so that would mean angle E, G, N is equal to angle um, e N P, and so that would mean that angle E G N would have to equal angle B C N, and that would mean that E G would have to be parallel to B C. So that's what we want to show in this problem. We want to show that E G is parallel to B C. Um, so how do we do that? Well, if E G were parallel to B C, then that would mean that. Um, Basically, DK would be perpendicular to EG. Um, and if DK is, is perpendicular to EG, then that means that um, K is the midpoint of arc EG. And if K is the midpoint of arc EG, then that means that NK is the angle bisector of uh, BNC. So that was kind of a little long chain of reasoning there, but really to solve the problem, we want to show that NK is the angle bisector of BNC. Um, so how do we go about this? Um, so I'm gonna hide the tangent line temporarily, um, just to make things a little clearer. Um, we wanna show NK is the angle bisector of BNC. Now I, I posted a very similar um, kind of problem earlier on my channel, and I'm actually gonna end up using it here. Um, so, um, so there's one theorem that says um, if you look at the locus of all points N such that the bisector of angle BNK, uh, or such that the bisector of BNC meets side BC at K, uh, they form the locus of those points um, is a circle um, 
and uh, the diameter is one of one endpoint of the diameter is k, and the other endpoint is a is a point on line BC. So I'm, I'm going to draw a couple more things here. Um, so the the other problem on my channel, basically, I started with point B and I took a perpendicular to AK, um, and and basically, but let me just first draw a few more points just to clarify. So the, the other problem, number 29 on my channel, basically I showed that angle BIK is equal to angle CIK. Um, so in that problem, I showed that IK is the bisector of BIC. In this problem, I want to show that NK is the bisector of angle BNC. But that would mean that, um, like I spoke about Apollonia circles, that would mean that K, I, N, and H uh, would all have to lie on a circle with diameter hk if that were true. Um, so that's kind of what we want to show. All right. Um, so, um, so one thing I want to do is um, I want to show by the radical axis theorem um, that it, that if you take a perpendicular to NK, it will end up passing through H. And then if that's true, if, if um, angle HKN is 90 degrees, then since those four points are in harmonic conjugation from problem 29 on my channel, um, it would have to be that NK is the bisector, which is what we want to show. Okay. So that's my goal. So what I'm going to do is, if you drop if you drop drop a perpendicular from n um, to the line n k, it would have to meet uh, the in circle at the antipode of point k. So I'm going to do that right now, um, and uh, the antipode of point k, um, which is point j we'd have to have JK is perpendicular to BC, right? Because DK is perpendicular to BC. Um, so really we want to show that JN passes through H and I'm going to attempt to do it using the radical axis theorem. So that's kind of my strategy here. Um, now at the same time, I have to use the fact that M is the midpoint of AF. Um, and I'm going to do it in a kind of clever way. So I'm going to draw uh, one extra line here and show you what my idea is. So M is the midpoint of AF, but notice that D is the midpoint of JK. Um, and also triangle AFK is similar to triangle KLJ. Um, so basically D and M are corresponding points of, of, of corresponding sides in the two similar triangles. Um, so that's where I'm going to start using that fact. Um, so what's ultimately my strategy here? So I want to show um, that J, N, and H are collinear. So I'm going to try to use the radical axis theorem, like I mentioned. And I'm going to want to show, if I can show that J, N, I, and D lie on a circle, um, and, and we know that I, and there's also a circle through I, D, and K. Then, then if you take those two circles combined with the N circle, and you use the radical axis theorem, we'd have that J, N, I, D, and B, C concur at H. And that would solve the problem. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. Um, so first I'm going to write out, um, like I mentioned, from problem 29 on my channel, we know that um, H, K, B, and C are in harmonic conjugation. Um, and, and then here's a proof that those two triangles that I mentioned are similar, uh, triangle A, F, K, and J, L, K. So angle J, L, K is equal to angle A, K, F because they're alternate interior angles. And um, we know J, L is parallel to B, C. Um, so and then also, of course, they're both right um, triangles. Angle LJK is 90 because um, 
dj's tangent to, uh, to the circle at lj and um, afk is obviously 90 by the problem statement so we have the similar triangles afk and klj and because d is the midpoint of jk and m is the midpoint of af um, that allows us to get other corresponding angles um, in those two similar triangles. Um, so before I do that, I'm just going to note one thing. Um, JK is a diameter um, of the circle, so we have to have that angle. Um, oh, this is what I mentioned before. D is the midpoint of KJ, M is the midpoint of AF. Um, and angle J and K has to be 90 degrees because JK is a diameter. Um, but I'm going to use the, the fact that these are both midpoints um, to show that uh, JLNID is cyclic. So I'm going to do a little angle chase here. So angle JLD uh, is equal to angle FKM. This is the key sort of insight because M and D are both midpoints of corresponding segments in, in these two similar triangles. Um, angle JLD has to equal angle FKM. And then um, angle FKM has to be 90 minus NKJ um, because FKJ is a right angle. And 90 minus NKJ, well, if we look at this right triangle, JNK, 90 minus NKJ has to be um, NJD. Um, but NJD has to be JND because obviously um, JD and DN are both radii of the circle, so they're equal. Um, so NJD is JND. And so we've shown that angle JLD is equal to angle JND. And so JLND has to be a cyclic quadrilateral. Um, but we want to also show that I lies on the cyclic quadrilateral. And it turns out that's not very hard because LJD and LID are both right angles. So since LJD is 90 and LID is 90, all five of those points have to lie on a circle. Um, all right. So now we're, we're pretty close to solving the problem. That was sort of the key step. Um, and so now I'm going to use the radical axis theorem like I mentioned. Um, so JLNID is cyclic. Um, and then, so, so this little um, parentheses notation means the circumcircle. So the circumcircle, of, we have the circumcircle of JLNID. Uh, we have the circumcircle of IDK. And note that that's actually tangent to line BC at point K. Um, and that's because um, the circumcenter of IDK is the midpoint of DK. And so um, it's clear from that 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 circumcircle is tangent to BC. Um, and then omega is the third circle that we're going to use in the radical axis. Um, so if we look at the pairwise radical axis of these three circles, it's JN, uh, ID, and uh, line BC because both the in circle and the circumcircle of IDK are tangent to BC. Um, so JN, ID, and BC have to concur, and that's exactly what we wanted, and they concur at point H. Um, and so now, because of that, we know that NK um, is perpendicular to NH. Um, because angle J and K was 90 degrees. And so NK is the angle bisector of B and C. Uh, just move everything to make a little more space. So this is what I just mentioned. Um, since these four points are in harmonic conjugation, and this is all using problem 29 on my channel. So there's a lot of geometry that goes into this. But since HN is perpendicular to NK, by that well-known theorem, I've mentioned it a couple of times on my channel, um, NK is the angle bisector B and C. And because of that, um, since NK is an angle bisector, that means that if you look at the in-circle, um, arcs EK and KG have to be equal. 
And if arcs EK and KG are equal, then that means DK is perpendicular to EG. Um, and if DK is perpendicular to EG, um, since DK is perpendicular to BC, we have to have EG is parallel to BC. Um, and from there, the problem is pretty much solved from what I mentioned before. So I'm going to redraw in that tangent at point N. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to draw it in this direction. Um, but basically, going through the argument I mentioned before, so O is any random point on this side of the, the tangent at point N. And so if EG is parallel to BC, then we could do a little angle chase. Um, and we have angle BNO has to be angle EGN because we know we defined NO to be the tangent to the N circle. So this angle ENO, uh, BNO is ENO, which is EGN, but EGN is BCN because EG and BC are parallel. And so if BCN is equal to BNO, that means that NO is tangent to the circumcircle of BNC at N. And so basically that means BNC and um, the BNC and the N circle um, both have the exact same tangent line at point N. Um, and that basically solves the problem. So NO is a common tangent to both the N circle and the circumcircle of triangle BNC. And so if that's true, then that means that the two circles are tangent at point N. Uh, so this is a pretty tricky problem. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, and if you liked uh, the solution, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.